Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, she says that she feels like the man. Well, I've got two emails that I'm going to go through with you today. And it's always interesting. It seems like when I do these videos at night, it's just kind of the theme of what I've been seeing in my phone session for that particular day. And a lot of the guys that I talked to today, they had a real problem with basically being the mangina in essence. They might have initially started out right acting like the man, but as time went by, they became more compliant and more nice, and obviously they get dumped for acting like a man, a big fucking mangina. So before we get into it, I got a quote that I wrote on this topic I want to share with you, and then I'm going to jump right into the first guy's email. And the quote says, women want men to be the leaders in relationships and act more like men than they do. Anytime men start calling excessively, acting needy or desperate, trying to spend more time and force more dates than women are ready for, trying to force a commitment too soon, etc., women will feel like they are losing their freedom and start saying things like, I need some space, I need to find myself, I need to get my head together, I'm not sure where I'm able to be at this point in my life. I had a girlfriend of mine that said that to me one time. It's not a fun thing when you're really into a girl and she says something like that because it's like a fucking swift kick to the balls that you weren't expecting. I'm not ready for a relationship. Things are moving too fast, etc. Men should never do more than 20 to 30% of the calling, texting, and pursuing. If they do, they will get friend zoned, get dumped, or never get women to fall in love with them. You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. If you try to force women into your life, they will force you out of theirs. Let's go ahead and jump into the first guy's email. It says, hey coach, I've been dating this girl off and on for six months. She had recently broke up with her boyfriend of four years who she was also on and off with right before we started dating, which I knew. We hit it off instantly and by month three, she was all over my shit and talking about not wanting to see anyone else, etc. Well, at that particular moment in time, she had a high level of attraction for you. He says, I had gotten her to open up and then I brought up, where do you see us going? Are you completely over your ex because I have feelings for you one night? And she ran. He says, I know this was a mistake. You think? Because that's the kind of statement a woman says. And that's why in my book I teach that the guy's job is just to hang out, have fun and hook up. Create an opportunity for sex to happen. Don't fucking complicate things. That's another thing a girlfriend said to me one time, don't complicate things because this is what I was doing. I was focusing on locking her down to a relationship, locking her down to a commitment, getting her all to myself so I'd feel better about myself. And she was trying to help me by telling me to slow down and chill the fuck out, which I eventually was able to do and obviously I wrote about that in my book. But it was an extremely great gift of a learning experience because – that's one of the things that I now teach when I talk to, to people, men and women. Women are also guilty of doing this to guys as well. W women will also chase men right out of their lives if they act too needy, too clingy, that kind of thing. But it's always best from a man's perspective that they don't bring up relationships or commitments because when a woman's emotionally at that place where she's ready and she wants to be exclusive and only see you, that's the kind of thing she says. Where do you see this going? Now, men are supposed to be the leaders. They're supposed to be like James Bond. They're supposed to be able to tell where women are at emotionally towards them. And therefore, being unsure of oneself is a feminine quality. It's not a masculine quality. And so when you say, where do you see us going, you're acting like a big fucking mangina. You're acting like a woman. You're not acting like a man. You're acting like you're unsure of yourself and you don't know what to do. Women don't want to teach us guys how to court and date them properly or how to be a man. They want us to know this already. And when a guy starts saying things like this, he's in essence communicating, I don't know how to be a man. Teach me how to be a man. Teach me how to be your lover. Teach me how to become your boyfriend. Fix me, honey. They don't want to do that. You're basically communicating that you're a boy and not a man. And it's going to turn them off. He says, anyway, I'd give her space for a week or whatever. Then she'd always hit me up and we'd do the same old shit. He says, we hit it off, we had a great time, we had lots of great sex and everything, and she adored the fuck out of me. Well, at least she used to adore the fuck out of you. I'd give her the space to open up and feel comfortable. Then when she started showing emotion, I did too. 
Whenever I began to want to be there for her all the time and show interest, she would run. In other words, you started acting like a woman instead of being hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. You see this bullshit in movies all the time. Oh, guys got to talk about their feelings. And they got to, in essence, act like women. And, of course, in the movies and TV shows, it causes the woman to gush and fall over themselves. But when you do this shit in real life, they haul ass on you. Because in one moment, you're acting like a confident, charming, sexy, attractive James Bond. And the next moment, you're acting like a little boy who doesn't know what to do is ask his mommy for instructions. It's a total fucking turnoff. He says, anyways, we made plans to hang out on Valentine's Day. She had to go to an old mutual friend's wedding a few days before and was forced to see her ex. After that, she said she had been thinking and wanted to try and work it out with him. I said, fine, whatever. She then changed her mind and we hit it off again hard for two months. She was saying all these things like, I'm falling for you. I want you. You're amazing. All my friends and family want to meet you, etc. You got to keep in mind when she's saying these things, anytime a woman gives you a compliment or tells you that she loves you or you're amazing or you're awesome, it only applies, that's what she feels in the moment. And men make the mistake of assuming that just because they said it six months ago that it applies right now. No, there, it's like a limited time offer. It only applies when she actually says it. He says, I treated this girl like gold, i.e. you kiss, kissed her ass, you put her on a pedestal, you treated her like a celebrity. You acted like a doormat. You let her walk all over you, et cetera, et cetera. He says, this whole time, but I was still very assertive with her. Really? You were so assertive that she still dumped you for being a nice guy. When she opened up, I, I also opened up emotionally. In other words, when she started expressing her feelings and acting all emotional and talking about her weaknesses and her fears, you thought, hey, it's time now I talk about all my fears. It's not attractive. The bottom line is when you say something to a woman, you got to think, is this going to make me look more masculine and confident and strong in her eyes or is this going to make me look like a fucking wussy? If you make yourself look like a wussy, it's going to turn her off. It's always better if you're fearful and you're unsure, get together with your best, best buddies and have those conversations and drink some beers together or have some coffee or tea or whatever you do if you don't drink alcohol. Don't share these kinds of things. Anything that's going to make you look weak and uncertain – it's going to cause her to become fearful and not trust your masculine core. He says she then started to get distant and then would say that she felt like the man when I'd always be hitting her up to hang out. What that reveals to me is that you're over pursuing, you're calling her too much, you're acting needy, you're acting desperate. And like when I talk to guys, one of the questions I will ask them is what percentage of the calling, texting, pursuing was initiated by you and what percentage was by her? And any time across the board, hands down, 100% of the time, anytime it's more than 30%, the woman never falls in love. She always would just kind of stay in limbo emotionally. And I mean the, really, the reality is the guy really only has to initiate the first couple of dates. In other words, the first couple of contacts over the course of the first few weeks to set a date. And once a woman feels safe and comfortable enough, she's going to start calling and texting a couple of days after their last date and all the guy has to do is use that as an opportunity to set the next date and if you do that, if you follow that, then pretty much the woman will do 100% of the pursuing and all you have to do is set dates, create an opportunity for sex time because that's what a date is after all. Whether it happens in the first date or it happens in marriage, depending on your moral views in the world, that's your fucking business but that's the bottom line. A date leads to sex. A man and a woman who are physically attracted to one another get together because they want each other. It's that simple. At some point, sex is going to happen. Hopefully, as long as you don't talk her out of it. She said to be patient with her and to give her space. He says, fuck my life. So in other words, you were pushy. You were needy. You were desperate. You, in essence, were acting like the woman. He says, last week, she said she didn't want to hang out because she was feeling like a crazy person and missing her ex or some bullshit. We talked on the phone for 20 minutes about it. And she said she didn't want to hurt me, but she felt like I cared way more about her than she did about me. It's one of the things I talk about in my book. It's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. That's why you let the woman do most of the pursuing. It's not that you're a cold fish. It's just you start off the courtship by just calling her to go out once per week. And then when she starts wondering about you, even though you might have just seen her two or three nights before and fucked each other's brains out, 
After a couple days have gone by, she starts to wonder, does he like me? Does he still care about me? Is he going to call again? I don't know. Does he still care? And she's asking her girlfriends. She's talking to her girlfriends about it. This has a positive effect on our attraction level. And so what does she do? She's not going to call you and ask you out for a date. But what she will do is call you and go, hey, I was thinking about you. Hey, I saw a movie the other night. It reminded me of you. That's typically what she does. And you should assume that she wants to see you. That's where the concept of women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. When they become uncertain of how you feel about them, that's when they contact you is to gain that reassurance. And when they, when they do, then you simply make the next date. So you give her what she wants, but she also had that time and that space away from you for her feelings to grow. That's where your feelings were unclear. She reaches out, you make it next date. And then since you've made the next date, she knows you still care. And now the next date might be a couple of days in the future. She gets to wonder about you and to think about you. And up until that time you see her again, guess what? Her feelings are growing. That's where the unclear part comes into play. And I explain that in my book. But just to give you some clarity because I see those comments, a lot of people don't really understand the concept of women's a man's feelings be, being unclear. That's why you need to read the book 10 to 15 times because it will make more sense if you do that. And he says, and this, she said that it turned her off. In other words, the fact that she felt like he cared more about her than she did about him, it turned her off. This is her telling him this. He says, I told her I was coming over to talk it out like adults and she said, fine. So now you're trying to force yourself upon her. She just told you that I need some space and what do you do? Oh, we're going to come over and talk about this like adults. He says, he continues on, I gave her my speech about liking her but not trying to rush things and etc. So you went over there feeling like I got to get all my feelings on the table. I got to reveal all my cards. I've got to kiss her ass and put her on a pestle and tell her how much I care about her and I like her. Thinking this is somehow going to have a positive effect on our attraction level. It doesn't. Women don't care. They only care about what they feel for you. Guys think if they go over and they prostrate their feelings because they saw us in a few thousand movies and TV shows. This is what the guys do in TV and in the movies. That it will have that same effect in real life. It does not work. When a woman says she needs space, you don't go over and force yourself upon her into her life to – communicate your feelings. She's already telling you, I need some fucking space because you're smothering me and now you're trying to, but I love you and I care about you and you're so important to me and I so need you. All you do is make yourself, it's like a car gets stuck in the sand and you keep giving it gas, taking it, giving it more gas even though the tires are all spinning. All it's going to do is get you more stuck. He says, I was planning on her kicking me out but she begged me to stay and we hooked up. He says, fuck, I stayed over and we had an amazing time playing tennis the next day. She said, maybe we can hang out again when I left, LOL. I didn't hit her up until today, which was Sunday, and then that was Tuesday. So the problem is you're doing all the pursuing. You're not letting her come to you. You're trying to force yourself upon her because you're fearful you're going to lose her. That's why she tells you that she needs space. You're literally pr pr pursuing her to the point where she doesn't want to see you. He says, I called her and we caught off for a bit, and she said she had a busy day, so I asked if she wanted to hang out sometime this week. How confident does that sound? Hey, would you like to hang out this week sometime? A man who's sure of himself is going to say, Hey, honey, I'd love to see you when you're free to get together next. That communicates two completely different things about yourself as a man. He says, she said maybe, but she always says maybe. When a woman says maybe, it means no. He says, how do I approach this situation now? I want this girl bad. Well, that's your fucking problem. Wait to hear from her, dude. She said, I need some fucking space. When a woman says, I need space, it means you don't continue to smother her. You wait to hear from her and then you make the next date. When she's had enough time and space away from you and you're not acting like a needy, insecure, desperate jackass because your feelings are unclear at that point, then she reaches out. And when she reaches out, you assume she wants to see you, you make the next date. So let's get into the next guy's email. He says, hey coach, I'm turning to you via email coaching as I have stumbled upon a problem. Over the past eight months, I've been dating a girl at work. He says, we're both medics and I successfully attracted her and transitioned into the exclusivity phase by applying the information contained within your book. Throughout our relationship, she's been highly proactive in initiating contact and has responded positively to sexual escalation. 
We enjoy spending time together. However, over the past two to three months, we have had difficulty. She has, to start, she has started to display highly bitchy and needy tendencies. She wants to consume all of my time. She becomes angry, flippant, belligerent, and gives me sudden ultimatums if I am suddenly unavailable. I stand my ground, which causes her to ignore me and then return later. He says, I've explained to her that while I love her and I adore her, we both also have individual ambitions that should be supportive of one another. He says, this is an example of a reoccurring problem. She came over to my place on Friday and we spent time together. We had fun and advanced to the bedroom for passionate sex. The next day, Saturday, I woke up early, leaving her asleep in bed and I resumed my early morning gym routine and I made breakfast for both of us. I told her that I have a few things to attend to in the day, work-related, but that in the evening we should meet again to go out for dinner and watch a movie. She agreed and things went according to plan. As I was tired from the night shifts in the previous week, I asked her to drive. She accepted and she was in the mood to give and spend time with me. We had a great night at the cinema and returned home very late. I was very tired and she dropped me home. We kissed goodnight and she left. The next day, which was Sunday, she messaged me saying that she was heading to the city and asked if I would like to come. As I had already spent two days with her as well as some time earlier in the week, I felt that I needed some time in the man cave attending to personal business. I told her that I had a few things that I had to take care of and I would reconnect with her later. What I would have said is, baby, I would absolutely love to see you right now, but I've got all this crap that I have to do. And I would much rather spend time with you. This communicates that she's more special than anyone else in her life. I would really love to see you and spend time with you, but I have all this shit I have to do for work. I've got to get out of the way. And even though it's torturing me not to spend time with you, I got to do it. But I would definitely love to see you later. When are you free to get together next? That's how you handle that. He says she responded with, that's fine. I remembered you wanted to go shopping. Later that day, while I was cooking food for the week, she texted me, but as I was busy in the kitchen, I was not aware. It was only later when I picked up my phone that I saw her initial message followed by hostile ones because I had not responded immediately. Sounds like your girlfriend's a little insecure. He says she had initially messaged me a question about what was I doing, followed by this only 40 minutes later. That's fine. Ignore me. She presupposed that you were ignoring her. This tells you a lot about her self-esteem level. A woman with a healthy self-esteem is going to say, oh, he must be busy. I'm sure he'll get back to me later. But instead, she assumes that you're ignoring her. Tells you a lot about her model of the world. And this is the whole reason why you date. And you don't just jump right in and marry somebody after a couple of weeks. Because you're not going to discover this kind of behavior right away. He says, I can't take this anymore. Or she says, I can't take this anymore. You have an agenda. I need to follow my instinct. No matter how hard I try, it is wasted with you. I won't interfere with your private life. He says, this is an example of how she always loses her head if I have taken time to reply or I'm not available despite giving her enough appreciation and value only moments before. She becomes rude and hostile. Well, at that point, that's when you need to sit her down the next time you're having dinner together and say, honey, and you pull out the text, say, when you sent me this the other day, this was a turnoff. This makes you look weak, needy, desperate, and insecure. The proper way to handle this, the, the loving way is to say, you know what? He must be busy and I'm sure he'll get back to me later. Because when you act this way, it's a turnoff. It's really unattractive. I adore you. I love you. You know I love spending time with you. But when you act this way, you're acting like a teenager and it's not attractive. It's not sexy. I'm just being honest with you. I really love you and I really care about you. And you're the most special person in the world to me. But this is a fucking turnoff and you need to stop. Now, I had a a situation in my own personal life with – this was actually something that happened with my ex-wife. And I didn't really know what the hell what I was doing. But the bottom line is she was definitely more into me than I was with her. And I remember one time – it just got the point. She was always accusing me of having other girls or dating other girls or cheating on her. She'd had several other boyfriends that had cheated on her and her father was always very demeaning. I always told her that she had small boobs or she'd have a top on and say, you know what? You don't have the bust for that. You need to change into something else. In other words, your boobs aren't big enough. You're not – and so she took that personally and that's kind of the way her father talked to her and it made her feel incredibly insecure about her body and her attractiveness. And so therefore – she deep down kind of felt unworthy 
Because, I mean, at, at the end of the day, when I was with my wife, I, as much as I loved her, I wasn't completely head over heels in love with her. And on some level, I'm sure she was able to sense that. And so it got to the point one night where she was just constantly accusing me of cheating on her. It was like once a week it would come up. And I finally sat her down and I said, look, I love you. I adore you. But I'm fucking tired of this. The bottom line is you acting insecure and always accusing me of cheating you. I'm a loyal person. I will never fucking cheat on you because that's just the type of guy I am. A commitment means something to me. Loyalty means something to me. And if I'm with you and I'm committed to you, I am not going to fucking cheat on you. And you accusing me of it all the time, I'm fucking over it. I'm done with it. I don't ever want to fucking hear that coming out of your mouth again. I was pretty much talking like I am now. So if you want to continue dating me and you want to continue to be my girlfriend, you will cut this shit out. This is your issue. This is your insecurity and you need to deal with it on your own. I don't want to hear about it. I love you. I care about you. I will be loyal and I will be faithful. If you feel insecure, go talk to somebody. Go get some counseling. Go talk to your girlfriends. I don't want to fucking hear about it because it's a turn off and I'm done with it. I'm tired of you accusing me of cheating on you. And I put my foot down exactly like that. That was a conversation I had with her. And she never ever fucking brought it up again. Ever. Not fucking once. Because she knew I meant it. And she respected me enough and loved me enough to say, you know what? He's right. This is my insecurity and I need to fucking deal with it. And you need to have this kind of conversation with your girlfriend if you want this bullshit to stop. And she'll love you more and she'll respect you more if you communicate this to her. He says, I don't – he says, I told her that I didn't appreciate her talking to me like this and that her, her escalation was unwarranted as we had spent two great days together and I had only just seen her messages. She replied, there will be consequences. At this point, I became angry and attempted – this is why you do this shit in person and not over text. The phone is for setting dates, period. And this is what happens. You get into having a relationship over the phone and communicating and things are going to get said in the heat of the moment and people are going to regret it later on. He's, he says, at this point, I became angry and attempted to explain to her via text that she had it all wrong as and creating unnecessary drama. Again, this is what you do in person. You don't do it over text. She then ignored me. As we have been in a relationship for about eight months, I messaged her asking her to, be res to respectfully reply as she had left things ambiguous. She has not replied since and I have not bombarded her with any more messages. Well, that's a you at that point. You, you got to walk and never look back at this point because you said your piece and you got to walk away. But when you get together next time in person, you got to say, honey, you need to communicate with me like an adult. Giving me this silent treatment, you're acting like a fucking seven-year-old. I mean, come on. I mean, seriously. If you have a problem with me, we need to discuss this in person like adults in a loving manner, not a hateful, pissed off. I'm an upset little girl, seven years old, and I'm taking my toys and I'm fucking going home. It's like, come on, seriously. He says, every time we have fun, a run of fun, intimacy and connection, she always finds some reason to become hostile and bitchy, assuming that I do not care. It's as if she needs me to check in on her constantly. Please help me understand what's going on here and how I can sort this out. I've not made any moves until I hear from you. Like I said, just next time you hear from her, She'll probably be a lot sweeter when she reaches out. Make a date. What she's doing is she's trying to punish you. This is, this is classic passive-aggressive type behavior. Passive-aggressive people, this is how they learned. Instead of communicating like adults, they seek to punish you. In other words, I'm going to withhold my love. I'm going to withhold sex. I'm going to withhold my body. I'm going to withhold my presence, my time, and my communication from you because I'm going to teach you a fucking lesson. And how do I know that? Where she said... There will be consequences. You need to point that out to her and you're sitting down and said, this is passive aggressive behavior. This is dysfunctional and this is not healthy. I don't know where you learned it from but this is bullshit. If you have a problem with me, we need to sit down and talk to her and say, baby, this really hurt me when you did this, when you did that, blah, blah, blah. And we can talk about it like adults. You giving me the silent treatment, I'm fucking over. I had a girlfriend that was like this and, and I eventually got – after a couple of years, I got fucking tired of it. Because it wouldn't stop. She just kept doing it. And that's the way she interacted with her family even to this day. I'm sure that's probably how – because I don't talk to her anywhere. Even to this day, I'm sure that's probably how she treats her husband and she probably how she interacts with her family because that's how you know she was when I was with her. And she was in her 30s at that point. And you know, by the time a woman gets to her 30s, if that's the way she is, she's probably always going to be that way. But if you can talk it out with her and she can understand it and you let her know that this is unacceptable, that she's crossing the line, that her behavior is inappropriate, that it's a turnoff, that it causes you to lose attraction for her, 
hopefully she will stop. And if she doesn't, then you got two choices. You can either put up with it or you can say, you know what? I love you, but I'm over it. This, I, you, know, you pushed me too far. I'm tired of this. We've talked about it umpteen times and yet you continue to do it. You maybe you will need to talk to a psychologist or a counselor and work out your issues because I'm done with it. And you got to let her know. The way I talked about the way I handled that situation with my wife and her jealousy and her insecurity, if you handle it that way and you let her know that that's inappropriate and you don't ever want to fucking hear it again, you, you got to tell her. Say, look, you should never assume that I don't care about you and I don't love you. You got to assume that I'm busy and I will get back to you when I'm available. And if that doesn't work for you, then you know what? Maybe you need to date somebody else because this is how I am. If you can't accept me and you can't love me and be mature and communicate like an adult instead of throwing a temper tantrum like a five-year-old, then maybe we're not meant to be together. You got to let her know these things. So let's get into the third and final email here. This guy says, hey coach, here's my situation. I'm 39 and my ex is 27 and really good looking. I met her nine months ago in my training facility and I contacted her through Facebook message and I set a date. Things went really smooth for three months and then the problem started. We had some fights because she wasn't trusting me and thought I was cheating on her, which I wasn't. From November of 2013 and after, things were worse because we tried to live together at my place. After that, we broke up four times and it was all my decision. After every breakup, I've contacted her and she was back to the relationship without asking questions. So you would break up with her and then you go crawling back. That's kind of weak, dude. In other words, you break up with her and you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. He says, our last breakup was 20 days before and the reason was that some friends of hers at the gym told her that I was flirting with clients and which wasn't true. <laughs> Good friends. This is the problem. You got, you got outside third parties interfering in your relationship. Probably single girlfriends of hers that don't like you or maybe they do like you and they want you all to themselves and so therefore they're trying to break you up with their girlfriend. Some women are fucking like that. They're ruthless. He says, from there, we stayed away for 15 days and then I contact her again trying to fix things. So in other words, you break up with her and you withhold your relationship instead of working things out and communicating like an adult when there's an issue. That's passive aggressive behavior, dude. That's fucking weak. You don't seek to punish your date by staying away on purpose or dumping them. Eventually, they're going to get fucking tired of the act and not want to get back together again. He says, I called her and we set a date at her apartment. I thought it was going to be once more easy to save their relationship, but it was really hard that time. She was afraid of coming back because of her past. She was afraid of the possibility of failure and going through that suffering once more. Yeah, because you kick her to the curb, punishing her, and then a week or two later, you call her wanting to hang out. Eventually, she's going to tire of it just like I, the girlfriend that I had that was – acting the same way that you're treating your girlfriend, eventually she's gotten to the point where she's fucking sick of it. And eventually she's not going to want it because it's hurtful. You get tired of having somebody constantly fucking rip your heart to shreds. He says, from there, the rules changed. I started to pursue her, but she was avoiding me and constantly saying, you need to get time to see what you really want. In other words, she's kind of gotten to the point where she's got the strength to walk away and now that you're pursuing and acting like the woman in essence, she doesn't want to give you another chance. He says, two weeks passed and I started to contact her through SMH, which was a total failure. Her last message was that for me, this relationship is over. See, this is what happens, dude. He says, somehow from the web, I found your videos, which they've helped me a lot about the whole situation. He says, so I contacted her three days ago. Well, obviously, you're not paying attention to what my videos teach or my book teaches because you're continuing doing the same thing that's not beginning you the results that you want. And I told her to meet up for 10 minutes to talk. I apologize about my mistakes in our past and I understand her. She knows from your actions that you don't get it, bro. Telling her that you understand her even though your actions are not reflective of that doesn't help you. He says, she said that to accept my apology and that she believes that I really mean it and she still loves me and cares for me but that it's not enough because a lot of bad things have happened in the past and she doesn't want to give us one more chance. She still comes and trains at my gym so we have contact maybe four to five times per week. One more thing is interesting that she has a Facebook profile of her wearing a t-shirt that everyone in the facility knows it's my t-shirt and her status says it's in a, she's in a relationship. 
When I've asked her about it, she became furious and doesn't want to answer me. He says, so how long do you think things should go on like this? Well, it sounds like like she may – maybe she's in a relationship with somebody else. I don't know. Maybe she got tired of your weak-ass bullshit and at this point in time, she's had enough. So she's obviously moving on with her life and the only thing you can really do at this particular time is to let her go and if she ever reaches out to you, assume she wants to see you and make a date. When you see her at the gym, be nice, be friendly, be playful. Don't go out of your way to say hello to her. If you see her, say hello, be friendly and then go about your business because unless she brings up getting together because you've already begged and pleaded basically and realized that it ain't working this time. Unless she calls you and contacts you, you pretty much got to put a fork in this one, dude. You need to move on with your life and start dating somebody new and you got to read my book to 10 to 15 times and learn to apply the fundamentals because this passive aggressive behavior that you're displaying, it's obvious that your girlfriend is tired of it and she's gotten to the point where she doesn't want to put up it. She she knows your game. She knows your pattern and it's not going to work this time around because at the first sign of trouble, what do you do? You just break up with her and you walk away from a relationship and then a week or two later, you come crawling back, figuring, oh, I, you know, she'll, she'll, of course she's going to take me back. And You've given all the power away at this point because now you started begging and acting like a mangina and now she has all the power. And so at the end of the day, it takes two to make the relationship work and she's told you it's over for me. And so therefore, you have to let her go. You have to assume it's over. She's part of your past. And move on with your life unless you hear from her. In other words, if she calls you or texts you, you should assume that she wants to see you. Then just say, hey, babe, great to hear from you. I'd love to see you when you're free to get together. And you make a date. Hang out, have fun, and hook up at your place. Have her come over to your place for dinner and make dinner together. And if she won't do that, then put a fork in it. It's done. Say, great. You know, Give me a call if you change your mind. That's pretty much the only thing you can do at this particular point in time. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. 